During the Second World War, Bob became a Marine. His military career took him to Guam and China. He was proud of the fact that he was a Marine. We know that the motto of the Marines is Semper Fidelis, always faithful. That is the ideal to which Marines strive. But it is the character by which the Lord lives, always faithful. The scripture says so. In Lamentations, it says the steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. The followers of Jesus find tremendous comfort in God's faithfulness to his promises, especially when someone we know dies in Christ. For example, Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. And everyone who lives and believes in me shall never die. The Apostle Paul wrote, We are always of good courage. We know that while we are at home in the body, we are away from the Lord. We walk by sight of faith and not by sight. We are of good courage. We'd rather be away from the body and at home with the Lord. So whether we are at home or away, we make it our aim to please the Lord. The reality of these promises is anchored in the faithfulness of God. So today, we come with that strange mix of joy and sorrow, blessing and burden, hope and heaviness. The very character of God in keeping his word is essential to provide us with the strength and stamina we need and is that which transforms all we do and say here from simply re religious platitudes to true promises of hope. And it is God's faithfulness that we see so clearly demonstrated in Bob's life. Let's pray, please. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for your grace. Thank you for the privilege that was ours to know Bob, to love him, to be impacted by his life, his example. We thank you for the hope that he had in Christ, which hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and his righteousness. We rejoice in the promises of your word, and it is on the basis of those promises that we find comfort in knowing for the follower of Jesus to be absent from the body is to be in your presence. May you comfort Bob's family. May you show to them great grace on this day. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Bob's grandson, Ben, is going to come and read the scripture this morning. Good afternoon. Um, I just wanted to share a couple memories and ideas. First, um, just to not only honor uh, Grandpa's life today, but also um, what what we can learn from him. Um, I know that Bob Crossman, uh, he never had a job the whole time I knew him. But, but he, he still worked harder than any man I ever met. Uh, he, he was a servant. He, he served our country in World War II. He served his wife. He, he served as an alderman, as the director of the Gibson City Chamber of Commerce. He served with his woodworking skills to make the town a, a better place. Um, he served in the Ford County Historical Society. He served as an election judge for over 45 years. He served with his vocal talents for over 55 years. He served the 4-H club. He served on the coin club. He served the church for 70 years. He served the cleanup day for 14 years. And he, he served everyone in this room. Uh, and uh, it, was, it was nice to hear stories today of people who served him. And, um, and in, in all this, that he, he served the Lord. In, in the lesson of the sheep and the goats, Jesus says, Truly I say to you, 
as you did to one of these, my brothers, you did it to me. Uh, Jesus takes our service to one another as, as to him. We, we, we do it for him. Um, and then he, he contrasts the world's idea of greatness versus God's idea of greatness. In Matthew 20, 25 through 28, he says, But Jesus called them to him and said, You know that the rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them, and their great ones exercise authority over them. But it shall not be among you. But whoever would be great among you must be your servant, and whoever would be first among you must be your slave, even as the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. I think that Bob Crossman was a great man because he served. And when uh, we all look like Jesus when, when we're serving other people. Thank you.
going to uh, share some memories with you that folks have written about Bob. This from daughter Barb. Since Bob and I moved to Florida in 1978, Mom and Dad spent Christmas with us each year. The year Ben, our first grandson, was born, however, they came twice. After Mom passed away, Deb would spend Christmas with Brenda and her family in Rantoul, then come to visit us in Florida each January. This continued through January of 2015. Especially in the early years, we always had a home improvement project ready for Dad to work on during his time with us. He liked to keep busy and productive, and we were thrilled to benefit from his skill and expertise. We would joke, we're so particular, we brought in an expert from out of town to do our work for us. Dad would come back with, I don't mind donating the labor, but I'm going to have to charge you for the mileage. Other memories of Bob from a variety of people. I've always enjoyed the stories that Bob would tell. Another, the many times he was always around during the Halloween parties. He was so lighthearted. I was so blessed to be able to help him with his house. He went from my job to my good friend. I will miss him deeply. I remember Bob playing the shot game at a party at our house and how much fun he's always been. Bob was kind and generous with his knowledge of Gibson City. I so enjoyed talking to him every time we met, which was often. I'm very thankful for his dedicated service to his country and to Gibson City. Bob was a great friend and a neighbor to many. We will always remember our good neighbor. We always enjoyed singing in the Messiah with Bob. We could always find something to laugh about or to tease each other about. Bob was a great friend. I'll always remember our little trips to town and going out to eat. He became part of our family. We always considered Bob a part of the Schultz family. He was always at our family gatherings and made too many memories to count or write. He was such a sweet soul. Every year for Grandparents Day at school, Bob would join my daughter as her grandfather. Always so special, always there when we needed help. And then a portion of this memory that there's got to be a story behind it. And in Driving in Heaven, in quotes, your other left, Bob, your other left. I'm not sure what that means, but somebody does. Dad and I always had coffee, this person wrote, and we talked and shared everything. I will greatly miss him, as will many of us.
Bob was a builder. He made things, some of them tangible, some of them unseen, but just as real. The tangible ones are part of his legacy, but so is his character. The writer of Proverbs says, A good man leaves an inheritance to his children and his children's children. Some of the greatest things left behind are examples of what it means to live a good and honorable life. The Apostle Paul wrote to a young man named Timothy and said, Let no one despise you for your youth, but see that you set for the believers an example in speech, in conduct, in love, in faith, in purity. When I think of the heritage and example that Bob leaves, I think of at least five things. Many more could be listed, but I think of least these five things. First, I think of the heritage that he leaves as a man of faith. Bob and I had talked about what does it mean to be a Christian. He had shared how he had a spiritual awakening that had begun while he was still in the Marines. We talked together about what Jesus meant when he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes to the Father but by me. Make no mistake, Bob was not perfect, but it is not moral perfection that gets you into heaven. It is through Christ alone, by faith alone, through grace alone, and Bob knew that. Bob left the example as a man of service. Ben, you were so right about your grandfather. He invested so much of his life and energy into service for others, whether it was carving that bear, whether it was Gibson City Beautification Committee, singing in the Messiah, helping with telecare, helping on the grounds of this church. Bob cared for others and sought to steward what had been given him for the good of others. As Ben said, if Jesus came not to be served but to serve, Bob thought he surely could do the same. We do well to follow Bob's example. Bob was a man of creativity. The Bible says we are created in the image of God. Part of what that means is having this gift of creativity. Some of us have a little. Some of us have a lot. Bob had a lot. His carvings, the woodwork, the stained glass, it demonstrated an appreciation for beauty and a willingness to share it with others. I'm thankful he did it as a demonstration of God's grace in his life. Bob left an example of what it means to be grateful. He had a tender spirit. I'm sure Bob could get grumpy. I never saw it, but no doubt he could. But through his suffering, he went through immense suffering with his neck, the discomfort of his recent illness, the other difficulties of his life, I never heard Bob say, why me? Woe is me. He could have. He missed his wife. He did not like being sick. But he was able to see the good graces given to him in his life and express gratitude for them. He was quick with a laugh and sought to see the good and not the bad. I was very grateful for his joyful disposition. I found it refreshing. The joy of the Lord is our strength. Finally, he loved family. Bob often told me what was going on in his family's life. Every time I would go to his house, I had to go see all the pictures, the pictures I'd already seen before. This is that one, and this is this one, and this is what that one does, and this is what this one does. He was so proud of what they were doing, and he loved them. It was the pride of a loving father and grandfather. Whether or not we're going to leave a legacy is not the question. You are, I am, leaving a legacy. The question is, what sort of legacy are we leaving? I doubt that Bob set out to do these things so that we could, on this day, say these kind things about him. Bob was humble and thoughtful and self-forgetful. He did these things because of his love for the Lord, his love for others, his love of creation, his love of his family. A good legacy comes when we dedicate ourselves to God's purposes and follow God's plans. We are grieving today because Bob's story, for now at least, has been written, but his influence continues, his example continues. 
And Bob continues, in the presence of the Lord because of what Jesus did on his behalf and Bob's decision to call on the Lord to experience his grace and forgiveness. That is a glorious legacy indeed. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we admit that we already miss Bob. We miss his joyful disposition, and we miss his laughter, and we miss his service. We miss his thoughtfulness and his kindness. Thank you for the privilege that was ours of having encountered his life. We thank you for the hope that he had in Christ, which hope sustained him in life and now sustains him in his death. Father, when the reality of this day comes for each one of us, and it is coming, maybe tomorrow, maybe next month, maybe next year, but the day is coming, may we also find hope in Jesus. May we also know the peace that passes all understanding that even in death we can find victory. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for your power. Thank you for your comfort. We would ask for all those things for Bob's family. Again, in the days to come, as they grieve his absence, may you demonstrate to them great grace and mercy and strength. We commit them into your care, and we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen.